Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Yang. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're new, I make videos based on my experience as a biology tutor, and I hope that my videos will be able to satisfy your curiosity appetite, whether you're young or old. And with that, let's dive right in. Last week, I focused on the description of the Arcus platform from Precision Biosciences focusing on iCRE1. Specifically, how it can be engineered to recognize the specific sequences that is mutated that results in a genetic disease. If you have not seen that video, you can click on the i button that is appearing above to go to that video. Today, I'll describe how the company utilizes the enzyme to tackle genetic diseases. Because the material is so complicated, if there's any questions that may arise, please let me know in the comment section below as I proceed to describe it. If you stay till the end of this video, I'll contrast between precision biosciences and beam therapeutics and give you my thoughts between the two. For the mutation to be corrected, the enzyme as well as the correct gene sequence template needs to be introduced into the target cells. The enzyme will cut the target sequence and then the template will be used to be inserted into the correct site via homologous recombination. Before I continue, let me describe homologous recombination in order for you to understand how correction works. Homologous recombination is seen in meiosis, a type of cell division found in the production of gametes where the same chromosome from the father and mother pair up in the reproductive cells in the offspring. Then, parts of the chromosomes are swapped between them, giving rise to new combination of genetic sequences within a chromosome. So, why do this? It is nature's way of increasing genetic variety, and some combinations may prove useful in survival of individuals in a population, ensuring that the species continue to survive. We are definitely a result of this. With this knowledge, let's go back to the iCRI1 story. To design the target gene correction, first, as shown in part 1 last week, the iCRI1 enzyme needs to be engineered to recognize the target sequence of 22 nucleotides. Then, the correction template needs to be designed such that it shares the same sequence before and after the iCRI1 recognition sequence, as well as the correct sequence. In meiosis, because homologous recombination is not 100% precise, this usually occurs outside of the gene sequences to be safe. In this way, the gene sequences are not affected during the process. Likewise, in designing the correction template, it would be prudent to use sequences upstream and downstream outside of the gene sequences. Unfortunately, this is where a very serious problem arises. Most human genes are large. The larger the gene sequences, the longer the correction template has to be, and the lower the success rate. This limits the number of potential targets for this approach. The solution to this situation is to do an exon replacement. Let me describe this further. As mentioned in last week's video, gene sequences are divided into introns and exons, and mutations that result in disease typically arises within the exon sequences. Since introns are cut out and do not end up being translated into protein, they can be used instead as sites of recombination. But then, another problem arises. There are more and more information coming out about the intron functions. Heck, even the discovery of iCRI1 gene itself was in an intron. The homologous recombination can therefore give rise to another mutation, even if it does not affect the genetic disease in question. This increases the chance for other deleterious effects. A potential solution for such a problem is to insert the correct exons upstream together with all the introns removed and adding the termination sequence of transcription. This way, the corrected sequences will translate into the correct protein and terminate before the mutated exons. Also, the intronic sequences can remain intact. However, this is also a potential problem because we do not know what are the consequences of exon duplication and whether this affects yet another biological phenomenon known as alternate splicing. As you can see, there are many considerations when designing the Arca system to tackle genetic diseases. Comparatively, 
All that Beam Therapeutics have to do is to use the correct base editing CRISPR-Cas that Beam have generated and design the guide RNA to recognize the target sequences. Then deliver this to the patient. Rinse and repeat for the rest of the monogenic diseases. What they do is to restore back the base that was mutated to the original. There's no fiddling and changing of stretches of gene sequences. Conversely, for the Arcus platform, there needs to be more care in designing the solution for each genetic disease they want to tackle. And because the system is invariably more complicated, there needs to be more monitoring to check for any unexpected consequences. Before I end, I'd like to dissect down an opinion piece published by Motley Fool I encountered during my research on precision biosciences. The premise of this article is to urge investors to consider this company as an alternative to the CRISPR stocks. Based on what I've discussed up to this point, I hope that you can see that some of the statements are factually wrong. For a start, iCRI1 is not simple. In fact, it is more complex. Because the enzyme's active site needs to be highly engineered, it will never be as simple as putting together a guide RNA whose sequence is just complementary to the target sequence with the CRISPR-Cas9 enzyme. In addition, there's one more component besides iCRI1 enzyme, the correction template. Why is it not mentioned? That is where the complexity lies, and this article makes no mention of it. The other problem lies in the single strand breaks. This is not possible with the iCRI1 enzyme and is erroneous. As I've shown earlier, double-strand breaks does occur although the way it is broken by the enzyme is considered safer. Also, Beam's version of CRISPR-Cas only produces single-strand breaks. If anything, this would be better than iCRI1. I raise this up to warn you to be careful of who is writing the article and how much content can you trust when you're researching a biotech company. Otherwise, you may be misled by analysts with ulterior motives. And I hope I'll be a reliable source of information for you for biotech companies in the future. And with that, I thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. You've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.